Hey y'all, Patrick here with Vetted. I have a bombshell of a video today. There is a new David Grush interview that no one knows about, and I'm going to tell you about it. What am I talking about? There's a place called County Highway, okay? That's a postcard, um, and it's a newspaper. It's print only, okay? You cannot find it online. You have to go physically to a store and pick up this newspaper. It just came out. They've done two volumes. This is the second volume, and there's an interview with David Grush. Look at that right there. The Republic of Occluded Facts, Whistleblower, David Grush. Let's see if I can get a closer look right there. Okay, exclusive interview. All right, we're going to be going through this article. I'm going to be reading it on the second half of the video, so stay tuned for that. But first, I'm going to tell you how I found it, who's behind it, and if it's legit. Right, so let's start there. Um, if you guys haven't already, hit the like button on this video, please. I deserve it. I do. I did a lot of work to find this, and you're going to find out what I did and how I found it and what's going on. I even made a little recording of uh, me talking to the – it was at a record store. And me talking to the guy, a little bit of information there, so you know I actually went and found this place. Um, I'm going to be putting a link to a PDF so you can read it for yourself, okay? Um Goodness gracious. So again, please comment down below what you think. This is crazy. Um, hit that subscribe button. I, you know, I definitely deserve it on this one, y'all. So I'm Patrick. This is Vetted. Let's jump in. All right. So what, what, what is this place? County Highway. Okay. It's a magazine in the form of a 19th century newspaper. All right, we're going to find out who's behind it. Okay. I did a lot of research on this. This took me pretty much all day, y'all. So, um, there it is, County Highway. Again, I'll put links to all of this so you can research it on yourself. So who's behind it? They've got a website. Again, I'll put links to it so you can find it. You can order it, but you can't get it online. You can get it delivered to your house, um, and that's it. It's just old school, right? Very hipster. Uh, they've got two volumes. This is the first volume, just regular paper. And then the second one is the bombshell with, with Dave Grush that we're going to be going over. Um, and I bought it at a place called Josie's Records um, in Plano, Texas, all right? And I went to the, I called them, went to the record store, because right here, where to find us? So look at all these states. Hint, it's not on the internet. That's right. So it's got a lot of states. Okay, find your state on here and see if there's a store near you. Okay, I'm in Texas, and I just looked for one around me that was somewhat close and went and picked it up. This is um, right here, Josie's Books and Records. So, again, you can go pick it up for yourself, uh, but you can't find it online except unless you watch this video. So, um, And who's behind it? So the person that wrote the article, his name is Walter Kern, all right, and... Here he is, right here. Editor at large, County Highway, co-host of America Week with Matt Taibbi. So he's connected to Matt Taibbi. Again, put links to all this so you can check it yourself. Um, Matt Taibbi, you may not know, he's got 1.8 million Twitter followers. Um, he was part of like the Twitter files when, with Elon Musk and all of that. Um, you know, prominent author and journalist. Same with... Um, What's his name? Walter Kern. Okay. And everyone writing in this newspaper is an established journalist. I did a lot of research into other articles and other journalists. So you'll be able to see that yourself. And again, they've got their own Twitter profile. They got a website, right? And it was hard for me to find it, to be honest with you. And I found this article right here in Design Taxi. It wasn't easy. Um, came out October 2nd. 2023 and it talked about you know this this newspaper right so you'll be able to find um some information there about this again i'm put links to all of this all right so you can find it um and yeah i went found this article and it's absolutely kind of nuts at first, I was thinking this is like, uh, you know, the onion or something like this. This can't be real. Why is this not out there? Right. The first issue came out, comes out basically every like two months. And it was the July, August um, one, which, again, 
just whatever, regular newspaper. Then the second one came out. This is volume for September to October. So this has been out for a minute. And somehow nobody knew about this, um, which is crazy. At least I haven't seen anything on it. Um, so, yeah, here you can, um, they have a, uh, Matt Taibbi and Walter Kern have a podcast. Um, again, legit, legit people putting this together. And they, you know, Walter Kern got an exclusive interview with David Grush. Um, so I guess, what should we do? All right, first thing we're going to do is um, listen to a recording I made, okay, on my phone, voice memos of the guy, uh, me buying the, the copy. Just, I think there's some context there, all right, about it. Now, granted, I live in Texas, so um, it's a one party record state so I can record people without them knowing as long as I'm doing it right so the guy didn't know that I was recording him now nothing nefarious or whatever I just didn't want to put him on blast um, and that sort of thing or show his face you know don't whatever uh, you can because you can go to any of these places and buy this now what he told me was kind of interesting um, they he doesn't he didn't he had it in boxes behind the counter it's not even out right because as he put it like well, they didn't tell him what to do with the newspaper, right? He just didn't know what to do with it. So anyway, let's listen and um, let's just, yeah, let's go from there. Let's listen to it. Hang on. All right, let's listen to it and see what this is about. Is it not like a couple other shops? It's con is it connected to Josie's, right? Like the one yeah. in Lubbock and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all in by the same people. Cool. cool. Yeah, th this is, in Texas, there's only five places to get this paper. Yeah, is Waterloo <laughs> one of the other ones? Or? I can't remember, yeah. honestly. I can't. Y'all were like three of, you know, three of the locations. Yeah. Okay, so it's more than five. I couldn't remember exactly, uh, but there's four, eight of them. But again, a lot of the states, I think almost every state has one, has a place where you can at least go find it. Um, again, you got to go pick it up in person. Or subscribe online and they'll deliver it to your house. And it's um, this, and the Farmer's Ranch one, as far as I know, they don't carry Oh, it's see, just, I didn't know that. I think it's just us, but I don't. I don't I, you know, that's sure. why I call. I was yeah. like, you know, let me call. Let me yeah, see yeah, what's yeah, going yeah. on. Because I'm like you. I looked at the website and I was like, what the fuck's going on? This yeah, is like, it's, I mean, if they're. so weird. I mean, it's cool. If this is legit, it is kind of cool. Yeah. Right? Like print, you can only get in print. You can't go, you know, it's not online. Yeah, because I couldn't find yeah, this digitally. Yeah, and if like their goal is to be mysterious but not like shady mysterious yeah exactly. they're doing a great job i it's agree very hard to find so how many other about. people have come like have a lot of people come in and bought this yes only because i was expecting nobody uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like maybe once every two or three weeks like so you have it you don't even have it displayed out it's just up on the bottom people ask for it right well, they didn't we don't have any way to display like, it how would you put it out yeah, yeah. and it's like that's and because i've I mean, I haven't done my due diligence to look at. I I don't know if it's something I want to put promote. out. Yeah, sure. so sure. I'm just letting. Well, those... I can tell you right here, I'm surprised more people haven't come in to get it. Just honestly, I'm about to put this online, and people may come start looking for it. Yeah, it's I, I, yeah, I was we, like, dude, every have, one would sell out. We have tons of copies of both volumes. Right? How is not every one of these going to sell out? Let's go get them, guys. Support this county highway. Let's support it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, so if you enjoy What's the it? other? I'll take, you know what? Let me buy the other volume. All right, okay. Just in I, case. Yeah, because it's like... Let me see what's in there. two months, I think. They said six a year they so, put okay, out. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Yeah, you're right. That checks in what you, what you just said. Yeah, I found some random tweet. This guy, this, this nobody guy with no follower just tweets out a photo of this article of this UFO whistleblower. And I'm just like, what? He's in that? Like, no way, dude. Because again, he's done like two interviews. Yeah. And news, right? Like, so this is so odd if this is real. Like Walter Kern. Why would he have an interview with Walter Kern? I gotta find. I out think about Kern this guy. is like the the head editor guy. or something. Yeah. Yeah, I he saw was like the, the only one. I he is. He is right here. You can see Walter Kern is the editor at large um, of this. Right. And yeah, I didn't know who he was. I was like, why is David Grush doing an interview with him? But yeah, he's a legit journalist, y'all. Again, we're about to get into the, the article 
uh, here in just a moment. I just didn't know if they were real people. Like I saw all the people on the that, website. Yeah, they're they're just all like, are innocuous they enough names, but like you can't. You, that's the other yeah. thing. You can't find like. I mean, look, dude, they got classifieds in the back. Like, how old school is that? Yeah, right? But, but then it's just like, well, classifieds are only, like, useful locally. So, like, <laughs> yeah, that's a good some point. of it is a bit. That is you know, uh, to be fair, the classifieds are, like, you know, put, like, emails and websites and stuff. So it's kind of a workaround around it, right? It doesn't have to be local. Um, so it's a legit paper. legit, And all the other, again, all the other journalists writing are legit people. Um, that write for big name, you know, publications. Uh, it's eight fifty an issue. Okay, so they're kind of expensive, um, but it only comes out every couple months. That's a good be. point. That's a, you know, that's a great point, man. Um, yeah, I clearly had enough time to think about like. Eight no, six, dude, I'm fascinated by eight sixty two. I'll be honest, I'm fascinated. Th that this story right here, because all I have was a picture. And I didn't have the name of this, dude. It took me like a couple oh, yeah, hours probably, yeah, to, to find figure this. out like what the name is. Yeah, I went off this tweet of just the article. It didn't have the county highway or any of that stuff. So it was really hard for me to find this. Um, you know, I basically started Google searching portions of the article, right? Text from the article until I got a hit from um, that, uh, from this, from this uh, designtaxi.com article about County Highway. And then I went to their website and that's where I saw the, that the article was there, the Republic of Occluded Facts. And um, yeah, just went down the rabbit hole from there, right? So did some digging, y'all. Investigative journalist over here, your boy Patrick. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, the, I guess I did do a little bit of that, right, for this. Um, so anyway, that's enough of that recording. Um, let's jump in to this article. I've got it popped up. I, I took pictures of all of it. I made video, but I don't know if I really need to share that, the pictures well enough, this PDF that I'm going to share. You'll, you can zoom in on it and see every, all the text so you can read it yourself, right? And you can find it online and blah, blah, blah. So let's just jump in. I'm, I'm actually going to read, um, from the article itself, uh, right in front of me. So there you go. Here it is right here. And then it continues on page eight, which is this back page here. Okay, eight, you can see that. And again, you can read the whole article from this. Okay, it's quite long, but let's just, uh, and I got some close-ups of it to help, you know, whatever. If that doesn't, if that's not good enough, right? So again, let's, um, let's jump into this. You guys can uh, read along with me if you like. Um, and again, I don't have to watch this part and go uh, look at the PDF yourself, but if you don't feel like reading it, I'm going to read it to you. All right, here we go. All right, so County Highway Volume 1, Issue 1. Uh, excuse me, sorry, wrong, wrong one. I got the other paper here. Uh, volume 1, Issue 2, September through October 2023, County Highway, The Republic of Occluded Facts. County Highway exclusive interview with UFO whistleblower David Grush reveals black projects, SAPs, NHIs, and are top Hollywood executives aliens? I don't know if I like that little sub subtitle, right, uh, that they got right there. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and read this. You know what? Why don't I just read from the PDF? Um, again, I do have it right here, but why don't I just read from the PDF and that'll make it easier um, for everybody. All right. One unsettling way to spend a weed in, in our republic of occluded facts is to drive to a small mountain town in Colorado, ditch your phone because it gets no signal and is a spying device in any case, and speak for hour after trippy hour about aliens and their weird craft with a man who purports to know something of their history. A history, he says, our leaders lie about out of fear, arrogance, and greed. Dave Grush, age 36, is a former intelligence agent, Air Force officer, and briefer of presidents on spooky matters, many related to satellites in space, known only to our military elite. He's a six foot six pylon of a guy with a close cropped hair and an open, unshaven face that goes pink in the sun.
but doesn't quite tan. I meet him on a warm alpine morning in a hotel parking lot, the very definition of neutral ground. Standing beside his spotless new Ford truck, which he plans to trade in soon because that's how he is, a car guy who buys one rig then covets another with custom high-performance modifications. We venture some small talk and size each other up, an art in which Grush, an Afghan war vet, seems well-practiced. When my hands move, his eyes move. He has a planted way of standing that seems like it might provide the basis for a solid karate kick. I guess in this little picture here. I agree in the parking lot to conceal the name of Grush's hometown, though he's lately become a public figure, the UFO whistleblower, testifying in front of Congress about the nation's alleged astral secrets and appearing on podcasts. Uh, I haven't seen him on any podcast, so does anyone know of any podcasts? Let me know. And, continued on page eight, let's go there. Cable TV shows. He likes his privacy. He says he's been through a lot. Intimidation tactics, warnings, threats. I concealed carry, he told me soon after we met. I'm carrying now. He lifted the hem of his worn red t-shirt and showed me a black 9 millimeter sidearm tucked outlaw style into the waistband of his hiking shorts. Oh, wow. Okay, Grush, packing heat, baby. Grush's troubles and his strange path to national celebrity began several years ago with an assignment from a superior in the intel world to poke around inside the government and try to learn whatever there was to learn about so-called non-human intelligences, NHIs, and the incredible vessels they're thought to pilot. Grush was thorough, wary of being misled. The investigation took four years. I already had a map because of the stuff I'd done. Oh, hang on. Let me, uh, here we go. The stuff I've done, let's read that again. I already had a map because of the stuff I'd done in my career. I knew where the skeletons were and what doors to knock on. You bump into one thing and think you found it, but it's only one slice. I would see one facet of the prism, but I wasn't able to look down on all the vertices. There was a lot of deception, a lot of lies, and some reverse interrogation. In the end, Grush compiled 40 interviews, some from people he'd worked with in the past, but hadn't sus suspected held pieces of the puzzle. The essence of what he says he found is that aliens are here. They've been here for a while, he's cagey about how long, and we have several of their ships, which we keep stashed away in secret hangars whose locations he claims to know. We also have biologics, meaning bodies, whose characteristics Grush isn't free to specify, though he hints that these come in different shapes and sizes. Ooh. Finally, he learned that these beings may not be friendly. All right, hang on. Finally, he learned that these beings may not be friendly, indifferent to us as best, he says. He also suggests... Hang on, let me make sure y'all can see this well. Okay. Um, gosh, where, where, where was I? My bad. Uh, he also suggests they belong to groups or species which may, in some cases, dislike each other. Grush predicts that much more will be revealed soon, within a year, he hopes. But such forecasts are common on the UFO scene. Yep, done a video on that. Check it out. Uh, it's called... Um, Let's review the promises made by the UFO community. And Grush is in there as well. It's got a thumbnail that says, trust me, bro, on it. Not of Grush, by the way. Uh, it's, it's not just aliens who supposedly warp time. It's the humans who discuss them. Correct. But the process, he's talking about uh, the people that make forecasts about the UFO scene. But the process may be speeding up. Grush says he is working behind the scenes on legislation that should allow him and let me go back up to the article here and others to bring forth evidence that will pierce the veil and launch a new era of interstellar cross species exploration. What he can say and did say to Congress on TV in a hearing held last August 
is that decades of hiding and studying these wonders for purposes of developing high-tech weapons, a cloaked endeavor he calls the program, has massively corrupted U.S. officialdom and its corporate instruments in electronics and aerospace, who operate without proper oversight and have resorted and have resorted to criminal misdeeds, including murder. He said to shield their work. After an hour of checking each other out, Grush and I climb into his truck and head for a nearby mountain trail. I like to drive fast, he says, and he does so, protected by a slick new radar detector mounted in the cab. God, people still use those? They used to have one in the late 90s. The son of a Pittsburgh Lincoln Mercury salesman and the first person in his family to go to college, he studied physics at Pittsburgh University. And, uh, you know, like Bob Lazar, they didn't get rid of his uh, academic records. Just saying. Uh, you know, Grush's background is verified, right? So anyway, again, I'm, I'm for David Grush and us finding out about him. That's why I'm doing this, y'all. I want to see his story all the way to the end. The UFO whistleblower grew up in lean, uncertain circumstances. There was bankruptcy, food stamps, church assistance. Um, here we go. There was bankruptcy, food stamps, church assistance. It bred a fascinating, a fascination with distant worlds. Throughout the chaos of my childhood, I gravitated towards Star Trek and military stuff, he tells me. I had a fascination with astronomy. I had a telescope as a teenager observing Saturn and various star clusters. I used to work at the Boole Observatory in college. I used to give night sky tours to the public, and I used to help produce planetarium shows. Wow, I didn't know. This is great. I, that's really cool. Oh, sorry. Hang on, y'all. Um, let's bring that up. Once out on the trail, surrounded by granite peaks, which Grush loves to climb as a masochistic hobby, I press him for details on the program. A masochistic body is in quotes, y'all, so that's something he said. I press him. Let's go back. I press him for details on the program. It's a frustrating interrogation. He swings, he swings between a boyish eagerness to share the secrets of the cosmos. We are not alone. Maybe we're like chimpanzees to them, he said. And recessive discipline discretion. All right, let's. Um... Get the rest of this. Um, at times, he falls silent in answer to my questions, but his silent reads in different ways. When I ask him, for example, if the beings have been with us since ancient times, he gazes off at a mountain in the distance in a manner I find enigmatically affirming. Interesting. And there's a quote underneath here. It says, there is no reason why a well-thought-out story should resemble real life. Life strives with all its might to resemble a well-thought-out story. Isaac Babel. Mm, that's a great quote to include, by the way. Um, all right, let's go back up to the top here. His most suggestive comment of the hike, one that haunts me throughout the day, involves the cultural history of the program. When I venture a theory that knowledge of its secrets might induce its induce in insiders over time a state of cultic grandiosity grush says i'm on to something describing a gnostic streak in certain initiates we are the gatekeepers they think there are also people of fundamentalist religious views who regard the matter with spiritual horror and would rather it never see the light of day obviously there are some who are going to think these non-human intelligence are extensions of demonic principalities. That's a quote from David Grush. For lunch, we zoom off to a toy-like tourist village of art galleries and ice cream shops. Given the peculiar morning I've had, the strolling visitors eating waffle cones seem childlike and pitiful. They appear not to know that they dwell inside a puzzle world where recently retired spies with heads full of paradigm-destroying secrets and loaded sidearms in their pants are lurking beside them, only steps away. 
Or is Grush lying to me as part of some vast government psyop designed to break our minds and render us helpless to further elite manipulation? At the fancy bistro he takes me to, he orders a gourmet pizza topped with jalapenos and drizzled onion. He turns on his phone and a Google alert appears. The Washington Post is attacking me, he says. Let's go to that article. Where is it? Um, Oh, right here. Okay. I read the piece on my own phone as we eat. It's mostly a media story, throwing shade on the upstart News Nation cave channel for devoting so much time to NHIs after running its first big interview with Grush. The piece accuses the channel, heaven forbid, of chasing ratings. Irked by the article's insinuation that he is colluding in a grift, Grush reverts to demolishing his pizza. Later outside, he takes a phone call from a congressional aide and walks for 10 minutes in circles around a park, furrowing his brow and nodding. It's a scene from a paranoid thriller, fun to watch. Boy, they will make a movie of this, and I can't wait to see it. Who will play David Grush, guys? Who'd you guys like to see play David Grush in a movie? We spend the afternoon together chatting beside a bubbling mountain stream. He clues me in about the mechanics of military secrecy, shooting down the common notion that our government is too incompetent or leaky to hold back the truth about NHIs. By burying piece of the program inside already existing black projects and SAPs, special access programs, the enterprise has been erased from view, even the view of many working on it who can't see the galaxy for the stars and planets but for the, but surely I say our presidents must know and our CI directors and their ilk. Not necessarily, he says. Let me get to the next one. So not necessarily, he says. I ask him to name the person who knows the most out of everyone who at least knows something. He offers a guess off the record. A formidable figure from late 20th century politics, though it's not among the few that I anticipated. I'm only guessing, he reminds me. I tell him this, sti- this style of interaction is maddening. Welcome to my world, he says. A tender issue soon arises. A recent article in The Intercept exposed a difficult... Get to the next part here. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, hang on. Um, oh, yes, okay, okay, right here. Let me zoom in. Hang on, y'all. So where is it? Oh, a tender issue soon arises. A recent article in The Intercept exposed a moment. Make sure that's y'all can see that, too. Again, I'll put links to this so you guys can look at it yourself. A moment. Oh, gosh. Okay, sorry. A tender issue soon arises. A recent article in The Intercept exposed a difficult moment in Grush's life and used it to question his mental health. Several years ago, while living in Virginia, he fell into an alcoholic funk and muttered about committing suicide. He was then held for 72 hours in a drying out facility. The reporter found police records of the incident after being tipped off. Grush believes by one of his bureaucratic foes. He now offers me his side of the story. The drunken incident in fact occurred, he says, but he insists it wasn't as discrediting as the writer made it out to be. Uh, Ken Klippenstein, I made a video about it. Okay, so you can look that up and uh, find that. Um, Yeah, totally shit article. Um, But he insists it wasn't as discrediting as the writer made it out to be. Like so many combat vets, he lives with a level of trauma, he explains. For a while, he treated it with booze. Strong spirits have always had a bad effect on him, acting on his system almost like opiates, a problem, he says, is common in his lineage. In his lineage, He sought treatment after the event and feels he put his low period behind him. I hear in his upbeat tone a plenitive tone. 
a plaintive tone, sorry. One I know from my own struggles with addiction. Okay, well, look, the journalist um, being honest there, I like that. This is surely a flawed human being being here before me, a suffering child of our indifferent universe. We are all flawed, flawed beings, but I'm convinced that his tales of his investigations with the in the universe of secrets, which surely does, does exist, is not merely an act. Earlier, recalling Afghanistan, where he identified targets for fiery death, he averted that his new mission, walking our no longer lonesome species to the folly of seeking, quote, feudalistic dominance, unquote, feels redemptive, morally restorative, though it does seem that battle excited him too. Quote, at heart, I'm an operator, he told me, after confessing to feelings a bit awkward wearing a suit to his congressional hearing. He gripped an imaginary weapon and swept its barrel through the air as though clearing an enemy position, his favorite allies in his wartime years. Quote, the Germans and the Brits, unquote, they got the job done, quote, and the Mongolians, unquote, toughest guys he knew. We part for a couple hours before dinner. I retreat to my motel cabin, lie down and drift. Paranoia creeps in, and possibly a manifestation of what Grush calls, quote, ontological shock. And old thoughts can't be reconciled. Do I trust his fantastic tale? Not sure. Do I trust the familiar legacy tales? Not sure. Not as much as I did yesterday. What I trust more than ever, strangely, is Hollywood. During our long and winding conversation, Grush shared with me certain private notions about the NHI phenomena. The creatures may be telepathic. They may use forms of high-tech camouflage. Their ships may exist in dimensions beyond our four. Their bodies may be drones or avatars, which evoke, which evoke familiar tropes from movies and TV shows. Are insiders at work in entertainment circles? Have monstrous secrets, secrets been seeded throughout our culture to prepare us for the coming shock? Are top Hollywood executives themselves aliens? It all seems possible. Okay, interesting. We're joined at dinner by Jessica, Grush's wife of seven years, a former Air Force nurse from Akron, Ohio, who served in Afghanistan herself. She's quietly humorous, polite, possessed of perfect posture and stoically tough-minded in a way that reminds me of my late mother, also a nurse from the Akron area. I find her presence balancing and calming. I sense this young couple has faced some novel challenges, not least her husband's evolution from a lethal, locked-on soldier spy to a messenger of wild, disruptive truths. Quote, It's definitely been a journey, says Jessica. One theme at dinner is Grush's obsessive streak. He reveals that he's been diagnosed as slightly autistic and acknowledges having trouble with social niceties, such as remembering people's birthdays. He shoots his wife a bashful glance and she returns a forgiving one. When it's time for dessert, sounds like he may have forgotten hers, um, which, hey, happens to everybody. Um, when it's time for desert, they both do more, counting their calories, American style. But then they relent, being naughty, and order cake. After dinner, I watch them drive off into the dark up to their house on a ridge beneath the stars. I always complete my missions, Grush said tonight, sawing into his thick steak. Quote, I'll complete this one too, unquote, he pledged, and I believed him. I believe he's a young man who won't, who can't, turn back. So there you go, guys. That is the article. Um, again, I will put uh, links, okay, to all of this so you can find it yourself and, uh, you know, see what you think. And again, I'll put links to the, um, uh, to the PDF so you can read this, uh, this article yourself. But this is quite fascinating, y'all. Sorry for the long video, but, you know, we got through it. So remember, County Highway... The Republic of Occluded Facts. County Highway exclusive interview with UFO whistleblower Dave Grush.
um, some some new things in there that I hadn't heard before, right? Nothing like crazy, crazy, um, but definitely different side of Grush and maybe going a little further than he's gone in like this testimony and the News Nation stuff. So th this is quite fascinating. So I hope you guys enjoy the read. If you didn't have time to read it and just watch the video, thank you guys for, for doing that. Again, please hit that like button, comment down below. Hit the subscribe button. This is what I do, y'all. Every day, new video at 12. I try to find cool stuff like this, stuff that no one is putting out. Um, you know, different opinions, thoughts about this topic. Every day, a new video. So 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. So again, guys, I'm Patrick with Vetted. We'll see you guys next time on the next video. Remember, every day is a gift. Peace.